How's it going everyone? We are coming off of some of the biggest news in gaming of the year. Honestly, it seems to be a wave of that all year long. However, got a bit of an update on the PlayStation Bungie partnership. There is an official PlayStation blog post. I'll talk about that. A special edition of State of Play is set for this coming Wednesday. We'll talk about that. Final Fantasy VII Remake Square Enix is hoping to share more news about that in 2022. And we'll talk the PlayStation Now update for the month of February at the end of this video but first of all Bungie is joining PlayStation a PlayStation blog post that has some updates coming from Jim Ryan president and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment first of all it should be noted quote first off I want to be very clear to the community that Bungie will remain an independent and multi-platform studio and publisher as such we believe it makes sense to for it to sit alongside the PlayStation Studios organization and we are incredibly excited about the opportunities for synergies and collaboration between these two world-class groups it will be interesting to see if all Bungie titles are going to remain multi-platform we do know outside of destiny there are going to be other titles that'll be releasing like destiny obviously i see that remaining multi-platform uh we'll see how the other games play out maybe they'll be multi-platform i know they're saying that in this blog post but you can remain an independent and multi-platform studio while still having some of your games be exclusive you're still technically a multi-platform studio but we'll see. Maybe that's just me reading into the tea leaves a little bit too much. Uh, Herman Hulse did speak a little bit about the acquisition, noting, I'm absolutely thrilled to announce a new member will be joining the PlayStation family. I've been a fan of Bungie for many years. I've admired and enjoyed the games that they create and have great respect for their skill in building worlds that gamers want to explore again and again. Bungie makes games with outstanding technology that are enormously fun to play. They also have unmatched dedication to the communities that play their games, and everyone at PlayStation and PlayStation Studios will be excited about what what we can share and learn from them. I've spent a great deal of time with the senior team at Bungie and it's clear their experience and skills are highly complementary to our own. We will be ready to welcome and support Bungie as they continue to grow and I cannot wait to see what the future holds for this incredible team. Uh, Pete Parsons, a CEO of Bungie, also had a lot to say speaking on creative freedom, three decades and counting of Bungie, and uh, yeah, I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. You can read the entire statement uh, and the blog post for yourself, but some interesting information regarding the exclusivity. I think that's the main thing people are concerned with, whether or not the Bungie titles will still be coming to Xbox and PC. Look, it's definitely going to be something. We'll see how it plays out because I fully expect like Warzone and uh, the you know free to play titles to be on PlayStation forever when it comes to Activision. But uh, the mainline Call of Duty games, eventually, I do see them going exclusive. I know that there's an uh, exclusivity period or uh, I believe their partnerships already worked out, that that's going to prevent it going exclusive for a couple of years, but still ultimately, uh, you know, there's big money being thrown around, so I just find it a little bit hard to believe that big money would be thrown around um, if ultimately you're not getting some exclusivity agreements out of it. However, it could be an instant of, uh, instance of, hey, Sony and PlayStation saw that Microsoft is throwing around big money to acquire these studios, these publishers, and they were like, hey, Bungie is one that we want to keep on our side and still have their games on our platform so it could be just a you know acquisition where they're like hey we'll put the games on xbox but let's make sure that they can't take it from us um that's something to consider as well i saw that notion be thrown around as well but definitely something that we'll see how it plays out because it could also be used as like a bargaining chip for sony when it comes to you know putting those games on microsoft and wanting like the activision games in return just throwing out ideas but um yeah, I just find it hard to believe that if Microsoft, you know, takes away the Bethesda games, all those games now going to be Xbox and PC exclusive, that Sony's going to acquire these studios, these publishers, and they're just going to be like, all right, yeah, Xbox still gets all these games. I don't know, that just seems like uh, a business malpractice to me, but that's me. I mean, uh, the heads at Sony, the business heads at Sony are probably much smarter than I am when it comes to making the most amount of money possible, so we'll see how it plays out. All right, moving on from that, Gran Turismo 7 Special Edition State of Play is set for February 2nd. 30 minutes of new footage and gameplay details are scheduled. This will be happening February 2nd, 2 p.m. Pacific Time, 5 p.m. Eastern on YouTube and Twitch. This will be centered around Gran Turismo 7, so don't expect anything else. Gran Turismo 7 is due out on March 4th on the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. I am surprisingly much more excited for GT7 than I have been on any other uh, GT title since GT5. Like, I'm just itching to have a racing sim on PlayStation that I can really sink my teeth into. You know, I've been playing a lot of Forza. I've been playing Forza for a long time. 
And those games have been excellent, but I want something on PlayStation as well, and hopefully GT7 does offer me something that I can really sink my teeth into. It looks like it has a variety of content, and it seems like they're gonna stay committed to it for quite a while, Polyphony Digital, that is. So we'll see how this one turns out. We'll get a healthy dose of gameplay come February 2nd. All right, moving on from that, Square Enix is hoping to share more news about the Final Fantasy VII Remake in 2022. Obviously, we had the Final Fantasy VII 25th Anniversary Celebration, and they hosted a live stream for that. That. Yosunori Kitase spoke a little bit about it, noting, and as for more Final Fantasy VII Remake news you've been waiting on, I think I'll be able to share more this year, maybe. Uh, Remake Project Creative Director Tetsuya Nomura then spoke, you should probably be more clear, and Kitase continued, noting, all right then, now that the 25th anniversary has begun, I'd like to get the Final Fantasy VII excitement going with everyone over the next year, and so I hope to share more news this year, so please look forward to it. So, Hopefully we get an announcement of the FF7 Remake Part 2 here fairly shortly. I mean, it's we're coming up on two years since the announcement of the FF7, uh, excuse me, since the release of the FF7 Remake, and, you know, if it comes to a point where we're getting these FF7 Remake Parts every three to four to five years, uh, let's just say four years, uh, 2020, then 2024, then 2028, then 2032, because I do expect it to be a four-part game, um, that's a little bit insane. I mean, I'm not trying to, like, age... Uh, a decade and a half over the course of Final Fantasy VII Remake coming out uh, in its entire story, but hey, sometimes these things happen, and it'd be better, at, at the very least, I'm confident that it will ultimately come out. Am I confident that it's not going to be a train wreck? Uh, no, I'm not confident in that completely, but honestly, I'm just excited things are being changed up, and I won't go into any spoilers since I know some of you guys may have still not played the game. It's a lengthy game after all, but... Uh, you know, FF7 already existed, I played through it, I loved it, but uh, I'm really excited to see where they take the story and how uh, wild it gets, because, um, you know, sometimes Square Enix, as far as intricate storytelling, has not uh, been a home run every time. Kingdom Hearts 3, I can point to that, but hopefully with the FF7 remake, uh, it's a little bit more uh, enjoyable, and they do offer something of high quality, and it does justice to the FF7 IP. And more than anything, I'm excited to see more of Vincent. Vincent's a character that didn't really get delved into that much in Final Fantasy 7 being an optional character, I think, with the FF7 remake. They have an opportunity to really delve into his past and his character as well. Lastly, I do want to quickly note, the PlayStation Now update for the month of February will add Death Squared Grand Theft Auto Vice City, the Definitive Edition, so that's the big one, Little Big Workshop, and Through the Darkest of Times, that's four titles being added in the month of February. A very minor update, but GTA Vice City, the Definitive Edition, I think is a title that will get some people excited, so wanted to make mention of that, but that's going to do it for me. Again, an update on Bungie joining PlayStation. Let's see uh, how many titles are kept multi-platform. Is it going to be all of it? Is it just going to be Destiny 2? We'll see how that shakes out in the future. GT7 Special Edition, State of Play, set for February 2nd. Square Enix, hoping to reveal more about the FF7 remake later this year, and PlayStation Now adding GT, Vice City, and some other titles come February. That's gonna do it for me. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.